finding these lumps and bumps early, find out what they are before you go to surgery so that first surgery is the only surgery that your pet needs so we can find out if it's benign, find out if it's malignant. Welcome back to the vlog. This is all about treatment options for dogs with soft tissue sarcomas. Be sure to check out the last vlog. There'll be a link below where I give you five things that you need to know about soft tissue sarcomas. But today we're gonna to be focusing on the main treatment options, including surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Don't worry, not every dog will need all three, but we're gonna highlight those. There are some other treatment options as well, like electrochemotherapy. So just a quick reminder, that it is really important that you talk to your veterinarian, often a medical oncologist, and in many cases, a surgeon as well, who is going to be involved in your dog's care, and they're going to be the ones to best be able to give you specific recommendations about your dog. This video is to give you an overview, hopefully, you know, just give you some information. If you haven't yet gone to see the specialist, or you just want to hear some information about soft tissue sarcoma treatment options in general. Let's break it down. We're gonna start with surgery because that is the most common treatment option for dogs with soft tissue sarcomas. As we talked about in the last video, what's really important with dogs with soft tissue sarcomas is that we know they have a soft tissue sarcoma before they go to surgery. That may be with an aspirate or it may be with a biopsy. And why that's so important is then we can plan and do a wide surgical resection. Depending on where that is on the dog, it may that surgery may be done by your veterinarian or they may recommend that you go see a board certified surgeon. Some of these tumors, depending on the size, the location of your dog, do you have a large breed dog, you know, a small breed dog, over the wrist, things like that. They may recommend if it's a challenging surgery that you go see a board certified surgeon. So we'll have some links below on where you can find a medical oncologist and a board certified surgeon as well. So surgery is often going to be the, you know, main way that we remove these. How big does the surgery be? One of the main guidelines, and I did mention this in the last video as well, is three centimeters around the tumor in a tissue plane, what's called a fascial plane deep. And I gave this example last time, but here we'll just do a two centimeter tumor. And again, so three centimeters on each side would bring that incision up to eight centimeters. So, you know, pretty big. So, you know, think about that that's going to be different if you have a golden retriever or a Labrador and it's over their side as opposed to over their wrists. And so why, you know, the importance of finding these tumors when they're small. So we have to think about the size of the tumor how big the dog is, the patient size, the location, is it over the face, is it over the limbs, is it over the trunk of the body, uh, and then the tumor characteristics, is it soft, is it freely movable, is it deeply attached to underlying structures, is it, you know, between paw pads and things like that. So, you know, on the neck area, all, you know, are there vessels, you know, other nerves that they're worried about that could be involved anatomically at that area. So those are all things that are going to play into the decision for surgery. The different types of surgery, the way that we often will break it down is a marginal surgery, which is often not going to get those wide margins that we need to prevent recurrence. A wide surgery, which is often the goal to get those wide surgical margins to prevent recurrence. And then a radical surgery, and that would be something like doing an amputation. So those are the sort of three main categories that we think about and that you'll be talking about with your veterinarian, the medical oncologist, and or the surgeon. So typically the goal with surgery when we get back our report is that we get wide clean margins. So, you know, my job and the surgeon's job and your veterinarian's job is to look at that biopsy report. We don't want to see just one millimeter. We want to see multiple, you know, wide margins. So, you know, definitely there is some shrinkage um, when the mass is taken out of the dog and dropped into what's called formalin, which is the liquid that we use to fix the tissue. So even if they measured three centimeters, we don't often see three centimeters measured on the biopsy report, but we don't want one millimeter. So we're looking for wide and clean margins. So on that biopsy report, we're looking for grade. As I talked about in part one, please go watch that. We often will get a tumor subtype, uh, but a grade is very important, mitotic index and the depth of margins. So, or the size of the margins are really important. And that is 
really going to help me make additional recommendations. If I have a lower intermediate grade soft tissue sarcoma with clean and wide margins, that may be all the dog needs. And those dogs will have a wonderful prognosis and can go on and live years and not need any additional surgery. I usually will see those dogs back every three months for monitoring. We're gonna feel the area. I always will have the owners be feeling the area where the scar was. And we'll usually do chest x-rays. I personally do chest x-rays every three months for the first year. And then I start spreading them out to every four months and then ultimately every six months. But these dogs can have a really good prognosis very low metastatic rate. I think I mentioned in part one. For grade one, it's about 10%. For grade two, intermediate grade, about 10 to 20%. And then high grade, about 20 to 45%, depending on what study you look at. So those high grade ones are gonna be the ones that we're gonna recommend chemo. So why clean margins? We are not gonna recommend um, additional therapy for the low and intermediate grade. For a higher grade one that with wide and clean margins, we're gonna recommend chemotherapy. In the next section, we'll talk about what do we do if the margins were not clean for those low and intermediate grade soft tissue sarcomas. All right, so what do we do if the margins were, a couple of different phrases, dirty, incomplete, or narrow for those low and intermediate grade soft tissue sarcomas? First thing is what is the location? If it was over the side of the chest and there's a lot of skin there and the surgeon and I think that there's it's reasonable to go back, often we'll do a second surgery. Another term for that would be a scar revision. The alternative option to that, if they can't go back, this will often be the case if it's over the wrist or over the end of the leg, the distal leg, uh, front and hind leg, there's just no more there's no more tissue left, you know, they can't remove any more tissue, is to do radiation after surgery. So post-operative radiation. And this has very good success rates for dogs with soft tissue sarcomas. Going back to what I said in the first video, you know, dogs with low and intermediate grade soft tissue sarcomas that have good local control, even with surgery with radiation, have very good long-term survival. So ideally, if we can get clean wide margins with surgery, that would be great. But surgery plus radiation, so you need to do surgery to get down to what we call microscopic disease, then follow up with daily radiation, usually given daily over four weeks with the weekends off. If you look at those dogs for the first couple of years, 90% still have good local control. And then in one study uh, by one of my mentors um, at my residency, 75% local control five years after. And five years is a really long time when you think about the dog life, right? How many years that would be for you or me when we're talking tumor control. So just really, you know, a really good long-term control. Yes, you still need to do surgery first to get them down to mi microscopic disease. In general, radiation is less effective for bulky disease. You'll hear the word gross disease, macroscopic disease. So in general, ideally you wanna remove as much tumor, get them down to scar, microscopic disease. We usually let that heal. At usually around the two week mark is when they're gonna start radiation. So if you have a dog that has incompletely resected soft tissue sarcoma, post-operative radiation is a great way to prevent the tumor from coming back. An alternative option would be the wait and see approach. I don't really love that. Um, when do these tumors usually grow back is a question I often get. They're not usually, they're usually pretty slow growing. So often it's gonna be around the six month mark. Could be in three months, could be in nine months. There's always ranges around those numbers. Uh, but ideally I would wanna be thinking about, you know, something like post-operative radiation. There's gonna be lots of different variations. You know, um, some people will talk about for a one on a leg doing an amputation. That's gonna be, you know, a radical approach to this. I would personally rather do surgery with post-operative radiation, but there's gonna be a lot more expense there. You're gonna to need to go to a radiation facility, but it saves the dog's leg. So I want you to know that this is a general overview, uh, but again, talk to your veterinarian, talk to your medical oncologist, talk to your surgeon, talk to the radiation um, you know, oncologist as well, and see what the different options are for your dog. But in general, surgery, wide clean margins. If you can't get wide clean margins, we can follow up with radiation. Radiation is most commonly going to be done after 
surgery. In some cases they can do it before, but in general we're going to be doing after. There is a newer type of radiation called stereotactic radiation uh, for bulky disease. Again, if it is deemed to be non-surgical, that would be something you could potentially talk to a radiation oncologist about. Uh, we do that for some other tumors like nose tumors, brain tumors, bone tumors, and things like that. Uh, but soft tissue sarcomas, usually we're doing the combination of surgery first and then radiation um, most commonly. Uh, there are some newer studies looking at stereotactic radiation, but um, again, talk to your radiation oncologist about that as an option. So which dogs with soft tissue sarcomas need chemotherapy? In general, the dogs with soft tissue sarcomas that I'm going to recommend chemotherapy are going to be the high grade ones. So we get back our biopsy report still going to remove them. We still want to get local control. So, that, you know, we want to get those wine clean margins. Potentially, if we didn't incomplete, if we had incomplete margins or dirty margins, we would do, we would still recommend radiation. Uh, if they had a positive lymph node for metastasis or high grade, those would be the dogs that I would be recommending chemotherapy usually a doxorubicin-based chemotherapy protocol. If they had metastasis to the lungs, we could potentially be uh, consider chemotherapy. I'll put a link below. I have a couple of videos on what do I recommend for dogs with metastasis. It's what I recommend. Please talk to your oncologist, your veterinarian about what they recommend. I usually do not use a doxorubicin-based protocol for dogs with detectable metastasis in the lungs, but please talk to your specialist about their individual protocol. I do want to make a note about metronomic chemotherapy, and I'm going to put a link below as well because I have a video about that. So metronomic is low-dose oral chemotherapy, and there was a study which used this type of chemotherapy for dogs with soft tissue sarcomas that were incompletely resected, so the low and intermediate, to prevent recurrence. And that was a very new way to think about using metronomic or using chemotherapy in general, because when I was a resident, we were really taught that if a dog had an incompletely resected soft tissue sarcoma, you know, especially keep, you know, going up to the example over the wrist, over the ankle, so the end of the legs where you can't usually go back and do more surgery, radiation was really just the standard of care to prevent those tumors from coming back. But metronomic low-dose oral chemotherapy has been shown to delay recurrence. Not as good as radiation, but can delay recurrence. And that usually combines a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory with low-dose cyclophosphamide. So that is a potential option. Those dogs are usually on that oral chemotherapy long-term, and there are side effects with that. Um, Cyclophosphamide can cause sterile hemorrhagic cystitis. I'm not going to go through all that. We're going to put a link below so you can check out that video. But in general, most dogs with a low and intermediate grade soft tissue sarcoma with complete margins don't need chemotherapy. Again, this highlights the importance of finding these tumor early. Please do your lump and bump check on all your dogs, all your cats, it is so important. Check out vlog number 73, where we show you how to do that lump and bump exam from nose to tail, skin maps, calipers, all the things that you need to make sure that you are finding these lumps and bumps early. Find out what they are before you go to surgery so that first surgery is the only surgery that your pet needs so we can find out if it's benign, find out if it's malignant. And if your dog has had a soft tissue sarcoma, include in that you know monthly lump and bump exam, feeling their scar, feeling for recurrence, uh, and just make sure because just you know some dogs with a clean resection with a you know clean wide margins, their tumors can still grow back. And I'll be honest, I've had dogs that have had incomplete margins and their tumors do not grow back. So nothing is a guarantee in the world of cancer. We just have to do our best to be vigilant and stay on top of it. That's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this helpful. Please remember to talk to your veterinarian. Please meet with a cancer specialist and please talk to a surgeon as well. Find out what's gonna be best for your dog. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you at the next video. Thanks so much for watching.